you join me in the midst of my campaign to unwind the tyrant Dong Zhuo's claw-like grip on China. I'm playing as Cao Cao, the master puppeteer. His failed assassination of Dong Zhuo led to a hasty retreat, which is the situation Cao Cao finds himself in on turn one. But that's just the beginning of his story. Let's look at the current state of the board in my playthrough. While Cao Cao's current empire may appear fairly meager, taking a closer look at the rest of the pieces in play reveals the strength of his current situation. Flanked by a triumvirate of peace-loving coalition pals, my lands possess an improbable amount of security. The needs of my neighbors perfectly align, and it's no coincidence. Cao Cao's unique manipulate ability, combined with some strategic military support, has allowed me to delicately influence the geopolitical landscape to ensure security and safe passage Do we have to? in what can be a brutally hostile area of central China. As an excellent melder of emotions and shrewd statesman, Cao Cao is capable of having the entirety of China dancing to the beat of his drum. The undercover network brings an entirely new paradigm to total war, the art of subterfuge. Meet Lu Zhe, a high-ranking official in Dong Zhuo's administration. However, Lu Zhe is secretly working for us. We released him from our service, at least that's how it looked to the rest of the world, and sent him out into the global recruitment pool. As a skilled character, he was snapped up by Dong Zhuo and was granted the governorship of Anding Commandery. Officially, he's working for the tyrant, but secretly, he's building up a cover network in order to perform covert actions for us. And there's a lot he can do. If he decides his needs are best served elsewhere, he could join Dong Zhuo for real, or even take the power lent to him and succeed to form a new faction with him at the helm. This can happen for non-spy characters as well. For instance, Huang Zhong, who starts the game as a character serving under Liu Biao, has broken away to form his own faction after becoming dissatisfied. Let's take a look at how spies work. More slots for spying will open up as I rank up my faction and if I specialize my playstyle via government reforms. Three Kingdoms take on the tech tree. I'll complete the dedicated spy network reform and free up another slot for spying so it's time to turn my attentions to other threats to my power, including some of my allies. After deploying a spy to any of the factions, they will sit in the recruitment pool awaiting employment to lead an army or take a place in the court. In this state, the spies can still garner a more detailed overview of an enemy faction's statistics, but have no agency to otherwise impact the faction. Clever utilization of spies can help me stay 10 steps ahead in my quest to unite China and mitigate the chances of an ally double-crossing me due to an incoming expansionist faction leader who has little sentimentality towards me compared to his predecessor. Don't forget to cast an ever-vigilant eye over your own character pool because rival factions can and will install their own spies into your recruitment pool. In fact, I have my own fair share of concerns over this Dong Zhuo alumnus. Spies use two resources that dictate the level of power and risk they have within an enemy faction. The first, undercover network points, are shared between your spies per faction and represent the support system of allies, safe houses, and resources for your spies. Cover points are individual to each spy and signify the quality of your spy's fake identity. Before we pull the trigger, let's browse the range of choices in the subterfuge toolset that Cao Cao could opt for. Court Noble actions represent the first tier of spy actions, where I can increase my own faction's diplomatic standing, mess with Dong Zhuo's bottom line via meddling with his trade efforts, steal ancillaries, or even taint the reputation of a character within the faction, perhaps with an eye to poaching them for myself, or even encouraging them to break away and form their own faction. Next up, we have General actions, which are available to characters leading troops and commanding generals. We can deny supplies, causing an ill-equipped army to begin starving to death. We can leak marching orders, making a faction more vulnerable to an ambush, or just straight up poison the military provisions, causing immediate casualties to the army in question. As the governor of Anding, Lu Zhe has access to the administrator's by actions. I plan to have him hand over the keys to the region to Cao Cao, but lower cost options could have me various different advantages in taking the province via military means. For now, let's stick to our master plan and put the settlements of Anding under our control. It is advisable to keep a buffer of cover and network points, as triggering high-risk actions can lead to dilemmas which cost these resources and put the survival of your trusted spy on a knife edge. Ah, looks like a rival politician in the Anding region has made Lu Zhe's escape unlikely. 
But as I need this land, I'm willing to sacrifice my spy for it. He was caught as he fled Anding, but Dong Zhuo, the merciless warlord, has chosen to spare him. It is possible he was just in a good mood, but there's a very real chance that Dong Zhuo has taken control of Yu Zhe and sent him back as a double agent within my own faction. I will have to treat him with a certain level of suspicion from now on. Granting him too much power could see Dong Zhuo play me at my own subterfuge game, whereas failing to give him the plaudits and responsibilities he deserves after his heroic effort behind enemy lines could also see him leave my faction and rejoin the real friends he made fighting in Dong Zhuo's ranks. These are intricacies of the all-new Guanxi system, another revelation for the Total War formula. Make sure to subscribe for the upcoming video where we'll take a deep dive into the new layers of complexity this adds to your playthroughs. Dong Zhuo's heir and deadly warlord Lu Bu is ready to eliminate the dissidents and return the province to its former owner. Perhaps this region isn't truly the object of Cao Cao's desires. Cao Cao himself is at the heart of my real plan. Taking control of the Han Emperor, located here in Chang'an, means taking control of the entirety of the Han Empire, as Dong Zhuo does now. My master plan, many turns in the making, involved taking control of the Nanyang province, with its strategically valuable valley back door into Chang'an. If my covert capture of the Anding region hasn't left Dong Zhuo diverting the bulk of his military might northwards, then let's crank up the pressure one more notch to give Dong Zhuo yet another distraction. I'll spend some of Cao Cao's credibility to team? employ his unique ability to incite proxy wars to create one last distraction to keep Dong Zhuo guessing. Dong Zhuo is a vicious warlord who almost everyone hates, but he has taken steps to avoid the ire of Huang Zhong due to his proximity to the child emperor. By manipulating the two faction leaders, I can force them to clash, giving me the final this opening I need accept. for my shot at uniting China under my banner. But that's not all spies are capable of. If a spy gets adopted into a warlord's family, they'll gain access to the most powerful spy actions in the entire game. These options allow you to destabilize the delicately poised political landscape and cause chaos on a global scale. In the case of Dian Wei here, if your spy is the heir and they kill the leader, they take control of that faction. Jumping forward to when my spy has regained their cover, he can attempt to hand over the faction to me. This will trigger a civil war to break out between those loyal to them and those loyal to the old ways. You've seen the devious toolkit of the all new spy system? Drop a comment below and tell us how you'll manipulate others and conquer China using espionage.